Good morning, and thank you all for joining us for today's Public Sector Series webcast, Reducing Costs and Increasing Efficiency Using SharePoint 2010, presented by Simeon Cathy and Bill Savitz. My name is Meredith Mead, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for Nudesic and the moderator for today's webcast. This webcast is presented by Simeon Cathy, Nudesic's General Manager of Portals and Collaboration, and Bill Savitz, the Director of Public Sector. We are very excited to have them present for us this morning. If you're, all, if you're all logged on, you should be able to see the titles by the states, SharePoint 2010, Nudesic Portals and Collaboration. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the session by typing them in. To ask a question, click on the Q&A verbiage located in the toolbar on the top left side of your screen. Type your question, then click the Ask button. Please note, all questions will be held until the end. We will also be using the signature chart feature within Live Meeting. Changing your feedback color within this tool provides feedback to the presenter. To provide feedback, click on the feedback menu found in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Select your feedback color. Your seat in the conference center will display your selected color. Lastly, this webcast is being recorded and will be available via the Nudestic website. We will email you when the link is available. If everyone is ready, please make sure your seat color is green. At this time, I'd like to turn our presentation over to Simeon. Hello, folks. Thanks for uh, joining us for our, uh, for our presentation today and our webcast. Um, my name is Simeon Cathy. I'm the general, managers of New, uh, general manager of New Bestics Portals and Collaboration Practice, which is a national practice spanning uh, 14 offices around the nation. Um, I want to tell you just a little bit about why this is exciting for me to present. Um, uh, just on a personal note, I've been working with SharePoint for about, uh, about 11 years, I started at Microsoft on the original SharePoint team. And the thing that's exciting for me is seeing how the sort of the evolution of technology and how it's being used in businesses, and particularly um, uh, unique businesses such as public sector. So um, it's great to have this opportunity to sit down and kind of show you guys some of the, the, the cool new features and improvements um, in SharePoint 2010. Um, Here's my uh, agenda slide. I just want to show you guys kind of what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about New Desic, um, and then about the practice that I, I manage uh, very briefly. And then we'll start to jump into some of the SharePoint 2010 features and benefits that may benefit, benefit you and your business. Um, and then talk a little bit about hosted versus on-premise on uh, deployment to SharePoint. And, uh, and then we'll turn it over to some Q&A. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about Nudesic. Um, I'll just, just hit some of the high-level points, and then you can feel free at any point to, uh, to jump, out, jump off to our website at www.nudesic.com. Uh, plenty of information out there that will keep you busy, um, so I won't spend much time here. I do want to mention that we do have, again, uh, 14 offices nationwide. You can see them there here on the map, uh, kind of spread out, um, kind of balanced around the nation. And uh, we do provide solutions and, uh, and consulting services in a lot of different verticals, including public sector. Um, Bill Savitz, who's, who's joining me here, he's the, our director of public sector, so he's focused specifically on this market. And I believe he's been in this business for many years. Um, some of our base practices that I want to highlight, just to let you know that while this is a SharePoint presentation, uh, we've got a lot of other practices. And if you've, if you've had any experience with SharePoint, um, you, may, you may realize that SharePoint really brings a lot of different um, um, data functionality um, to, to, to end users, you know, citizens, constituents um, across, across the playing field. Um, to make that all happen, um, we have practices that sort of support all of those, those pieces being tied together and integrated. Uh, the one I'd like to highlight first, which has been sort of our longest living, breathing practice and uh, probably most mature, is our custom application development, Silverlight.net practice. Um, that's how kind of Nudesic got started, started about eight years ago. Um, I'll point out our portals and cloud practice, which is the one that I represent and I'm speaking to today. Our business intelligence and SQL practice, so data visualization, deep SQL backend stuff, so you can get the business intelligence into the hands of end users and, and folks. Um, and connected systems in BizTalk, ESB, and um, practice. Dynamic CRM is another one. And then finally, our, our newest practice, our managed services practice. Um, I want to mention that each, each one of these practices is managed um, from headquarters, from our, our Irvine office. But all of our offices around the nation um, um, fill each of these practices. So 
Uh, we have these capabilities nationwide. Our core business models, uh, really kind of three. One is consulting services. Again, this is uh, how Nudestic got started. And then as we've um, learned from our customers and our experience, um, um, what people repeatedly need or what businesses repeatedly need, we'll go build solutions, accelerators, and uh, kind of prepackaged products to fill that technology gap more readily. So where the platform leaves off out of the box and what your business needs, if we see repeatable processes, we'll sort of package those up and bring them to our customers to fill that gap uh, more quickly, more cheaply, in a more uh, robust and supportable way. And then finally, managed services. And this is as we build those partnerships and that level of trust with our, with our clients, um, we, um, we extend those services on to ongoing maintenance, support, um, and help manage infrastructure, platform, et cetera. Now, um, I think I have one slide that really talks about our SharePoint practice here. We have over 300 SharePoint deployments. Actually, I think that's kind of a low number now. We, we, we're doing more and more every day. Um, and almost a million hours of SharePoint-specific um, services delivered to our, to our customers. So we've got a lot of experience in the SharePoint space. Um, our hiring, we hire some of the leading talent across the nation. Um, if you've gone to any Microsoft conferences, you've probably seen some of our employees and our staff uh, delivering um, on behalf of SharePoint. So we're very tightly uh, partnered with Microsoft. And then we also cater and serve some of the, the, the largest and most successful businesses in the world. And we like to think that part of the reason they're successful is because we're delivering uh, a lot of value with our services and solutions. Um, and, and, and at the end of the day, what we're able to do is bring, you know, partners, vendors, employees, you know, the whole sort of uh, um, business landscape and um, together and getting people to work together. And SharePoint's a great platform for that. For that. I'll show you some examples of that uh, later in some slides. The sort of the secret sauce that we, um, that we use to make uh, these engagements successful, to really come out with a good strategy for deploying SharePoint in um, businesses, is we look at it from four different perspectives to ensure that we're looking at everything and not leaving something off. Um, you have to have a good balance of these things or your SharePoint deployments will fail. Uh, we look at infrastructure, make sure the infrastructure can support uh, the, the business need. We look at governance, making sure that, um, you know, citizens or constituents or end users of a, a particular system have the right tools in their hands, the right level of access, but not too much where they can get themselves into trouble. Um, it's very important. A lot of, in fact, a lot, of, a lot of deployments fail because that the governance is overlooked. Uh, change management. I'm going to get back to change management in a minute because I want to talk about user experience real quick. Um, user experience, we really have, we have a dedicated user experience team nationwide that looks at the end user scenarios and makes sure that what we're deploying is going to work well for those users doing studies and that sort of thing. Now, the reason I left change management to last is sometimes I think um, it's more important. I believe that, and, and in my experience, I've, I've seen a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of business processes sort of come into play um, out of necessity. A lot of human business processes and a lot of emotional attachment to those business processes. Now, when you go take a, a system like SharePoint or any, um, or any other application, you put it in front of a bunch of business users who have architected their own ways of doing business, very creative, very cool ways of doing things, and you say, hey, here's how you're going to do it today. IT has decided here's the new way. It can be a struggle to get people to adopt and and uh, and use the the benefits of the technology. So change, change management is very important when rolling out new systems to customers or to uh, to end users. So I just want to bring that up. These four components, we look at each one of them. Um, some of our our customers have one or more of them already taken care of, and then we make sure we right size our strategy to match what the customers are doing. So on that note, we're going to get into um, so the, the fun stuff, the SharePoint stuff, um, this is all focused for, uh, um, for you guys on SharePoint 2010. Some of you don't have experience with SharePoint at all. Um, I'm going to try to keep this high level enough that it hopefully will make sense and you'll be able to apply some of these concepts to your current business. For those of you who have uh, already been playing with SharePoint or use it on a daily basis, you'll see some obvious benefits in the SharePoint 2010 release. Um, some of the uh, business productivity challenges that have driven some of the, uh, uh, the feature sets and the improvements in SharePoint 2010 are um, 
the, the needing um, businesses needing to drive some insight from some com com complex systems and different data sources. Also, um, the need to work more closely with uh, with citizens out there, or with um, you know providing citizen services, or with customers or partners, or even or, or vendors. Um, People are used to working now with uh, very disparate, located, geo-disparate um, folks. So uh, it's another another challenge out there. Also, there's some heavy um, regulations and policies that have been you know, coming out due to um, for specific reasons, and so those can be challenging as well. And then um, folks are are starting to <clears throat> actually consumer markets and behaviors online have really been sort of changing the evolution of how people work together. Um, and so embracing some of that, you know, millennium or government 2.0 uh, work styles. Um, and then some other uh, challenges around IT is, uh, you know, managing, um, is finding software that will interoperate with other line of business systems, sort of elevating line of business data up to end users um, or to, to citizens out there um, providing those services, providing transparency to, to data. Um, protecting intellectual property, and, uh, and also enabling innovation. So I'm going to take some of these concepts, some of these challenges, and show you how we can, um, how SharePoint 2010 addresses some of them. Um, before I dive into the actual features of SharePoint, uh, Microsoft has been so kind to provide sort of this pie chart, which helps uh, that elevator conversation when somebody says, hey, what is SharePoint? Um, helps kind of explain what it is. I could go on and on and on for hours, and in fact, I've done plenty of presentations that go on for hours um, about all the different aspects of SharePoint. This is going to be sort of the high-level way we break apart the feature sets in a logical way to speak, talk about them. The top one is sites. Um, every one of, the, one of the main constructs in, the, in a SharePoint deployment is a site, um, and that's a container for information and users and access to information. Uh, communities, fairly self-explanatory. That's um, there's some features and functionality that enable people to really work together and form communities around specific ideas and, and projects. Uh, content. Um, there's uh, some enterprise content management, huge enterprise content management improvements in SharePoint 2010. There's also some really good improvements around public-facing web content management. So both from the enterprise content management side, uh, also to the the uh, the web content management side. Um, and then search, again, that's pretty self-explanatory, some big improvements, uh, especially with the addition of fast search. Um, insights, this is a, sort of a new word. Um, historically, business intelligence has been the word to describe this area, but business intelligence really um, was, a, a lot of business intelligence work was driven from sort of CEO level folks saying, hey, I need a corporate dashboard to see how bad business is doing. Well, insights really means that um, your departmental level folks um, actually can get insight in out of the business data and make it more readily available at that level of the business. And then composites, this is um, basically the idea that with a platform so vast and so flexible as SharePoint that rather than having to go build enterprise uh, applications, we can build these little composite applications and tie disparate data sources together. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So. The high level sort of three out, um, three bullet points out of that are to connect and empower people, which I'll talk about, uh, cut costs with a unified infrastructure, and I'll talk about how SharePoint's got some um, some big benefits there, and then rapidly responding to business needs with you know with uh, some of these features, specifically uh, composites um, and, and content as well. All right, so uh, to get started on uh, content um, and empowering people. There's been some great improvements around uh, the rich user interface. Some of the Web 2.0 uh, concepts that have been driven from the consumer market have really uh, landed um, in Microsoft's, uh, in this product release. They've really taken to heart some of the improvements there and use, um, helped to ground usability. An example of this is for uh, those of you who are technical or on the IT side or in development, um, you'll note, note that the kind of the difference between web applications historically and local desktop applications is on the local desktop application when you load it, you feel people feel really connected to the data. Um, on web-based applications, you feel people feel fairly disconnected. You'll read through a form, fill it out, hit submit, and then the whole screen goes white. And then something loads again, and then you feel kind of this weird 
you know, a context switch. And then you got to look on the page again to figure out, okay, what just happened. Well, with some uh, some improvements and some maturity in the technologies, uh, web applications, and especially this version of SharePoint, um, really feels like you're working with the desktop applications in a lot of ways, uh, adding, uh, using AJAX and other things, and the uh, client object model now in SharePoint. The ribbon uh, user interface now in SharePoint looks and feels a lot like the office ribbon, so if people are used to using that, that um, experience is now uh, present in SharePoint throughout. Um, people, one of the ways, some of the ways that people stay connected to information and share information across the Internet over the last uh, few years are things like Dig and, uh, and tagging and Facebook, those sorts of things. There's a lot of social features now that have been added, sort of enterprise Facebook, uh, tagging, blog feeds, uh, setting alerts so you can get notified when things change. So um, a really nice blog features as well. And then also some uh, some really nice work, that, uh, additional work that's been added, especially with combining performance point with the, this release of SharePoint um, to do data visualization, so people can track KPIs and uh, and pull in external um, data into the interface and in, into a similar interface or just that SharePoint interface and get to that information uh, more quickly. I'm going to go through a few slides here to show you some screenshots of what this kind of some of these things look like. Um, uh, that change management that I mentioned earlier um, speaks to this. If people are used to using Microsoft Office, um, it won't be much of a jump for them to start using SharePoint. It sort of feels like a web-based office, especially with um, cross-browser support. So you don't, um, you, uh, Firefox is now a tier one supported browser. Um, you get that familiar Office inter inter um, experience with, uh, with the ribbon in SharePoint. Now, the nice thing about the ribbon, and, you know, when Microsoft first released, released the ribbon in Office 2007, I was a little bit skeptical. I thought, gosh, I just learned how to use Office, um, <laughs> and, and now I have to relearn how to use it. Um, my, my mind has definitely been changed after using it for a while. The thing I really like about the ribbon is as I clicked around on the screen, um, the ribbon changes. So if I have my mouse in a content area, the ribbon will change for editing text and in, in inserting pictures and that sort of thing. If I'm clicking on some list information or library information or just one document inside SharePoint, then the ribbon switches to, you know, I can check that document out or, or view it online or edit it. So uh, a lot of improvement there. Uh, site authoring and publishing, much easier now. Everything can be done in line. Uh, this is a big improvement over SharePoint 2007 and 3, where you pretty much, if, if, you, if you weren't a real technical person, you would kind of have to go find somebody who was good at HTML or somebody from IT or a web developer to build um, um, a nice interactive content. Now you can go into SharePoint um, if you have used Word in the past, and it's much like editing a Word document. So uh, live preview, as you hover over menu items, it changes right there on your page for you. Uh, you can embed rich media like uh, video and, and images, and, um, and there's a, a lot more support for branding um, as well. So, in fact, um, if, you go into, if you're familiar with PowerPoint and you can create a PowerPoint theme, you can actually export that and import it into SharePoint and, and make your SharePoint look like your PowerPoint. Um, just a quick note on this. That's another big improvement to SharePoint 2010. Um, if you're working with multiple language governments or, um, or, or citizens, you can switch on the fly. You can switch um, that, the language preferences. And instead of having to go to a whole separate site, everything will change dynamically right there in front of you. So a nice improvement there. Um, if any of you guys have, if anybody here has, has worked with Groove in the past, Groove has finally kind of matured into a full-fledged Office product with full integration with SharePoint. Uh, one, of the, one of the real nice improvements that I like is for those of you who are sort of the mobile uh, field warriors out there, um, being able to take things offline is great, um, but also being able to fill out lists, list items, uh, calendar events and things while you're offline, having that synchro synchronized back is also uh, uh, very nice. Um, but for, and also for um, slow link networks. Um, in the past, it was sort of a peer-to-peer -peer replication of data for the offline um, 
solution. Well, now when documents or files get replicated, only the changes in a document get replicated. So if I make one change to a four megabyte PowerPoint and it's just a text on the first slide and I save it, um, only that few bytes of information actually get replicated back to SharePoint and out to all the other folks who have taken that content offline. So there's some really cool stuff there um, that could open up, solve some business problems in, uh, potentially in your business. Um, there's uh, been a lot, of, uh, a lot of work done on the mobile side where you can actually navigate lists and libraries very effectively. Um, you can edit stuff uh, live and um, do, do voice over IP, email, and instant messaging. Um, some pretty cool stuff there. Now with the Office web applications, you can even view your Office documents um, on your mobile device as well. So it's not even having to have any Office components installed. You can go um, to assist a browser, mobile browser, and view Office documents. So some pretty nice work done there. And this is all very, very customizable in this release. Um, in the sort of community theme, uh, wikis and blogs have really taken a big, uh, big step up as well. Um, blogs, uh, like, like consumer-driven blogs, have really uh, found their way into uh, corporate America and especially into SharePoint. The blogs, you can put in rich content. Uh, you can do a lot of tagging. Tagging is pervasive throughout SharePoint now. Um, and the Enterprise Wiki is very flexible. You can add inline rich content and, uh, and, and SharePoint web parts as well. Some nice, some nice stuff there. Now, uh, connecting with people, I, I, in a lot of presentations, and I can't see you guys out there, but I'll ask the question anyway. I ask people, how many of you have actually, are actually doing the jobs that you went to college for? And uh, about one out of 10 people raised their hand. So what that means to me is there's a lot of intellectual property locked up in people's minds that nobody knows about, but could be very valuable to the business. Um, and so uh, there's been some really great work in SharePoint 2010 to really elevate that, um, that intellectual property um, elevated into the enterprise. So uh, by people filling out uh, forms. And actually, this is kind of funny because back in 2003, 2007, when my site's inside SharePoint and that kind of profiling feature was available, I couldn't get people to fill out those forms. Um, now with things like Twitter and Facebook and MySpace, I can't get people to not fill out forms. So um, I think that these new features, which are much more closely tied to, you know, Web and Gov 2.0, um, are people are really going to start using them and taking advantage of them. And with new search capabilities as well, finding people and expertise um, becomes uh, um, very much easier to do. So um, all of that IP that's locked up, all of that training and all that experience people have, getting that elevated and, and discoverable to other people in the organization um, is going to be, there's going to be a big transformation in the marketplace with some of these features. And it comes, it comes out of the box with SharePoint 2010. So very nice. Um, with some, uh, some, some, some nice work done in the Excel services. Actually, I call Excel services the unsung hero of the SharePoint platform. Um, in 2007, I deployed a lot of really cool dashboards and surprised a lot of C-level executives with the kind of transparency we could bring to their business by elevating business intelligence um, on, uh, on dashboards. Very, very cool benefits here. Well, with SharePoint 2010, um, there's been a lot of improvements. You can do a lot more interactivity now and sort of have that Excel experience from the browser. So really cool stuff there. And, and above and beyond that, if we add performance point in, which comes as a SharePoint component now during a typical SharePoint Enterprise install, where we can do some really deep slicing and dicing of business intelligence and, um, and, and put that in the hands of the, the business user. So information workers can get that information and make, make more informed decisions. Um, this screenshot is just an example of some of the things you can do with all of the connected web parts. Um, there's also the ability here, too, to put this information out there in the public forum. So anybody with a, with a browser um, could get to some really interesting information using these services. It's very flexible, really nice user interface, and uh, uh, makes it easy for people to sort of drill into the information that may be useful to them. Um, 
So one of the probably the one of the largest investments I've seen out of this release of SharePoint 20, uh, SharePoint is around enterprise content management. A lot of folks have invested a lot of money in FileNet or Documentum or other third-party uh, document document management and document repository systems. Uh, with SharePoint 2010, there's a lot of great improvements. I'm just going to list a few things off really quickly. Um, you can declare records inside SharePoint, well, so you can lock documents in place so they can't be edited. You can transform documents into PDF, have them shipped over to a document repository system. You can have some very rich workflow to ensure that the right documents are being viewed and, and reviewed by the right people. There's document retention policies out of the box that you can set at a folder level. So documents have, have a lifespan that's managed automatically. There's a new document type called document sets, where if I wanted to create a new, let's say, mergers and acquisition uh, document, it will automatically provision you know, the four documents I need for executive review, due diligence, pro forma, you know, um, contracts, those sorts of things, and track them all together. So they're all tied together, they're all managed together, and go through the process and become records together. So um, if anyone out there is using some of the, uh, some of the older platforms, um, there's a great story with SharePoint 2010 to move to that unified infrastructure where people are already collaborating, or you may already own SharePoint for that matter. So um, it'll, it can, it, it's, it's really a, truly an enterprise content management system this time around. Um, by the way, I've, got a, I've, I've put together a really nice enterprise content management demo. If you guys would like to see that live at some point, please uh, look at our, our, the last slide in this deck and contact myself or Bill Savitz for a live demo. Uh, SharePoint in the public sector. Um, I'm going to guess, just through some of the conversations I've had with existing customers, um, that you may already own SharePoint. Um, it's included in a lot of the enterprise agreements. If you're working with Microsoft today, um, there's a possibility you may already own it. If you already have it deployed, um, we find a lot of people who just haven't had a chance or don't understand how to take advantage of those features. The upgrade path is, is very nice this time around from SharePoint 2007. So again, let us know if, we can, uh, if, if you've got SharePoint installed, we can help you take advantage of that. Uh, there's, some, there's been some great improvements around the internal and public facing sites. You know, getting, making your business, your agency um, uh, transparent publicly, showing folks you know, what you, the government's doing for them, what you guys are providing, giving them insights into information and and projects, those sorts of things, so internal and external facing sites. You get the collaboration benefits and then also that uh, public publishing benefits as well. And um, some really good control around which information you want to share, right? So um, um, you can control what the public sees versus what you see internally um, very nicely. Um, there are sites, templates that, you know, sort of um, – that, that can help you with some of the project departmental and collaboration needs you might have. And uh, you can also host some business intelligence and uh, in, in some of the sharing sites. Um, let me um, move over to the unified infrastructure a little bit. Um, a lot of siloed information out there and a lot, of, uh, a lot of folks that we work with. We find customers with everything from 500 access databases to, you know, you know, 25 different third-party solutions out there. Um, Out-of-the-box SharePoint provides a nice, uh, you can start unifying your infrastructure by leaning on SharePoint to bring some of those other disparate data sources together and having one interface, one management surface uh, to, to support uh, for, for the folks that use the system. Um, some really nice deploy, deployment flexibility as well. Um, you can do on-premise or hosted. I'll talk a little bit more about that. You can store data inside uh, SharePoint, or you can connect to other data sources um, and actually interact with it. So full read-write capabilities with external data sources, but it still feels like it's inside SharePoint. So end-user adoption becomes less of an issue, and user experience becomes less of an issue. Um, there's uh, enterprise-wide management capabilities now. There's a lot of nice enterprise services that are kind of laid out there. You can use the SharePoint UI or decide not to. Each of the different enterprise services can be managed separately now, um, so it helps, helps um, IT be more productive in that area. A um, couple of different uh, scenarios for deploying SharePoint. You can have your on-premise deployments where you've got full control of the data, full control of the integration, um, 
or you can go into a hosted service where Microsoft is really sort of championing and investing a lot in cloud computing. And to that end, now SharePoint is available in the cloud. Now it's, it's, some of the features have been um, um, uh, pulled away a little bit, some of, the, some of the integration features, but if you just need some collaboration, you just need to get information out there, um, it's, it's a great tool. It's a great cost-effective way to get started now. Um, with Microsoft hosting in the cloud or your IT department hosting locally, there's also a, a third option that helps bring your constituents and your, you know, set of sends, partners, employees, and uh, all, all together. And uh, New Desk, through our managed services offering, we can do a full on-premise feature parity, uh, full feature parity deployment and host it for you. So if you don't have either the skills, the hardware, or, or the bandwidth really to get started now, um, let us know because we can get you up and running and start getting through some of the, you know, some evaluation of, of, of SharePoint, full SharePoint 2010, full enterprise deployments. Um, we can help you with development. We can help you with a lot of the different things you might need uh, to get started. So um, that's a, sort of an additional one. But there's some flexibility there now, and the platform has been built specifically to allow the technology to sort of disappear and start delivering more business value with just out of the box out of the box deployments in any deployment scenario. Um, on the rapidly responding to business needs theme, uh, composite solutions. There's uh, been some really big enhancements in the tools for um, uh, for managing SharePoint, specifically Sh uh, SharePoint Designer um, and Visio services, and using that for some of the um, um, some workflows and things. I'll show you some of that. Uh, data connectivity we can connect to external data sources now which I mentioned earlier. Um, in the developer productivity space, uh, Microsoft's done a great job this time around. I have, uh, have had many, many developers work for me and continue to work for me who's, um, who's, who struggled with deploying custom solutions on SharePoint in earlier versions. The story now with the integration with Visual Studio 2010 um, using uh, TFS, Team Foundation Server, um, the application lifecycle has is, is really a, a really nice experience. Um, very serious .NET developers who would never use a platform like SharePoint are really starting to come around and go, "Wow, this is a really nice platform um, to to actually develop and integrate with." Uh, here's a screenshot of SharePoint Designer 2010. Again, you see the same sort of ribbon experience. Uh, there's a built-in workflow designer. I can actually go now with Visio 2010 sit in a meeting with some business analysts, talk about business processes, and actually build those workflows out in, Viz in, in, in Visio on a projector, and then import that into SharePoint and turn that into a workflow. So a uh, really nice transition from business to technology um, in that case. Um, another thing I mentioned I'll talk a little bit more about is the ability to connect to external data. Well, inside SharePoint, when you're working with a list item, uh, or, or a document, there's um, what's called content types. And so um, the SharePoint Object Model will react differently to different content types, and, and you can tie logic to the different types of content inside SharePoint. Well, with um, uh, SharePoint 2010, we can also have external content types. So I can connect up to a database of customers, for example, and pull that data connection into SharePoint and treat it like a content type. Uh, even though the data is really external. So my experience inside SharePoint feels like the information is inside SharePoint, and the users don't know the difference. They may edit some customer information in that database by editing a list item in SharePoint, but really the changes are happening back in that legacy database. So some really cool, some really great productivity gains there in delivering business value in a unified, with a unified experience. Um, info path forms. It's been a lot of great improvements in InfoPath. Um, all of the forms now inside SharePoint, when you're editing an item or you're adding an item, um, that's all using the, the form services and InfoPath forms. So they're very flexible, can be edited. I, in fact, I am not a developer or a strong developer. And just a couple of days ago, um, to do some of our managed services to estimating, I sat down for four hours. I created an InfoPath form. It does validation. Um, it does calculations for me. And now my teams nationwide, all of my account managers can do real-time calculations of hosting costs in, out of our data centers 
and then submit that and alert the managed services team. So I've now, I've, instead of having emails sort of bouncing around the company, finally landing with somebody who can give them an estimate that may or may not be the same as an estimate they got before, can really um, um, manage that process very easily. And again, you know, it's, I, I, I'm not a, a strong developer, and I was able to build that in just a matter of hours. So some, some really cool improvements. If I can do it, I guarantee you, you can do it. Um, some nice visualization through Visio services. So like we've seen with Excel services, where you can put a uh, Excel document on SharePoint and then view it online, same holds true or similar holds true for, um, for Visio services now. So you can take your Visio document. You can connect it up through mashup APIs to other data. You can uh, pull in um, uh, real-time updates to, to uh, any data source. And so when it loads and you view it on screen, you can see the status of different systems. So um, in this example here, you can see that there's a bunch of infrastructure um, that we're looking at and monitoring, a nice video diagram of that. But when this thing loads, it's actually going out and checking different services to see what's online. And you can see there that some servers are offline. So um, it's going to be, I'm really excited to see how this, um, how, how this gets used in the marketplace. There's some really cool, I have some really cool, um, uh, just doing a little bit of brainstorming, thought about some really cool ideas about how this could get used in, in government. So I look forward to seeing what you guys do with it. Um, now, in previous versions of SharePoint, there's been a lot of, uh, uh, let's call it constructive criticism uh, towards Microsoft from uh, the consumer market saying, you know, hey, it, it, it doesn't really adhere to some of the, uh, the, the standards-based technologies that are out there. Well, um, I'm happy to say that Microsoft has actually taken that to heart and listened very closely and understood that if they want to be a player in this market, they need to actually um, um, have out-of-the-box accessibility, uh, um, out-of-box accessibility with a lot of the worldwide standards out there. And this is really important for uh, in, in the government market, in Government 2.0. Um, these standards um, are, are all of the ones you see listed there um, are easy to integrate with just out-of-the-box um, SharePoint now. Now, I'll talk really quickly um, about a, a few different deployment scenarios. Now, in the past, your typical deployment scenario was sort of your intranet, where all of your employees got to work together and collaborate using SharePoint. It was one of the big selling factors for SharePoint was the buzzword at the time, collaboration or, or document collaboration. Um, but as uh, the technology has grown and people have seen different ways to expose that um, beyond the firewall and start connecting partners and vendors as well. So where businesses have started to focus on what they're really good at and using partners and vendors and other companies to help them with things that they're not really good at. Well, now the technology has really sort of allowed that connectivity, bringing in vendors and having them have access and collaborate with employees. But um, the other thing that's sort of happened since it's become available on the extranet is it's now become a really, um, a really strong internet pro platform. So some of the, the reason I, I put this slide together is because um, a lot of the scenarios that we see are, or, or the, some of the surprise looks I get when I talk to people is that um, we, we can use one platform, one unified story, to share the same information with multiple different audiences. So citizens out there can get to the same, um, the same information or the output of collaboration between partners and vendors. And in some cases, depending on the scenario, actually collaborate with, um, with employees for, or, or people in the field um, from your organization. So having the same infrastructure um, lowers your IT costs, your management surface, and, um, and enables these different disparate um, groups of people to really be able to start interacting and working together along the same goals. And in government, I believe that that's a very important scenario. Um, in, uh, I want to talk a little bit about sort of that hosted versus on-prem um, or even virtualization. Um, this sort of Chevron thing here that I outlined is kind of your typical life cycle when you talk about evaluating and then deploying, finally, a technology. And during these different phases, um, there's, um, you'll need to have environments to support these different phases of development. And so usually to get started, you want to evaluate a platform. So you bring up a server or you do some research and you kind of you bring that online. 
Um, and then you want to do some demoing, maybe some prototyping, showing executive man management the value of the platform, in this case, you know, SharePoint. Um, so you have another server that's running, or maybe you use the same server. Once you get buy-off and sign-off from the organization and funding, you move into, you know, development and test. And then finally pilot, and then eventually you get to staging, and then finally, when you're ready to go, you finally move to production. Now, the reason that I put this together is I want to mention that that's a lot of investment. That's a lot of servers, a lot of, uh, a lot of IT overhead right there. Um, with some of the hosted environments out there, there's a lot of benefit from having instant on and only pay for what you use environments, right? So once you move into production, some of your other servers may start kind of disappearing. So if you've already bought those servers and you've already implemented them, um, then you've got to be creative about figuring out, well, gosh, how am I going to maximize my investment and use those servers for other things? Um, some of the, the hosting options out there, including ours, um, allow you to, to sort of bring these instant on environments, use them for their particular need, and then shut them down. We see a lot of folks whose development lifecycle takes off for a month or two, they deploy something to production, and then it gets really quiet for six months. And then when a new uh, policy or, or compliance ruling comes out, then there's some more development that happens, and those environments get come back online and then, you know, get used for a few months and then get turned back off. So uh, a kind of a, a benefit there to some of the hosting options that are out there. Now, that's sort of a high-level overview of SharePoint 2010 that I wanted to um, – sort of share with you guys some of the features and benefits there. Um, I would encourage you to let us know if you guys want more information. Um, we're happy to sit down with you, talk about your particular business, give you some deeper live demos, specifically around the scenarios that interest you or maybe some of the features that interest you. Um, I personally enjoy doing these demos. It's fun for me to show some of the work that, you know, I've had you know, 10 years of experience playing with, really get to the point where I can – you know, really feel comfortable saying it's an, it is an enterprise business collaboration platform. Um, it's really to that level, finally. Um, and then I just want to say thank you from, uh, from Bill and I and Nudesic uh, for joining this web, for, this, uh, for joining this. And I want to um, uh, just point out a couple of things on this slide. If you, if you have any questions at all, feel free, feel free to write down our uh, email addresses, send us mail directly. Um, but also we encourage you to follow us in some of the other social networks. We've got our own YouTube site, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So um, go out there, go to our website, learn more about us. Um, I realize this is pretty high level. Um, so if you want to know more, please do contact us. Uh, Meredith, I want to um, hand it back over to you and encourage people to ask questions and uh, take those for a few. Thank you, Simeon, for this awesome presentation. We did have a few questions come through, and just as a reminder to ask a question, click on the Q&A verbiage located in the toolbar at the top left side of your screen, type your question, then click the Ask button. The first question that came through was, what are the cost savings, and what kind of cost savings could they see with hosted SharePoint? Oh, okay, good, good question. Um, actually, it's funny because I have, there's another webcast on the Nudesic website um, that's specifically about the benefits of hosted SharePoint. Um, and hosted SharePoint not, might not be right for everyone, uh, but I, I sort of the, it's definitely the direction that, uh, that the cloud is going. So there's, there are definitely some benefits. Um, a couple of the slides on this slide deck I stole from my old presentation. Let me um, – I know I have it open here. I just want to show you guys a quick slide couple of slides that I put together just to help illustrate and answer that question. Um, the, the orange bars are in-house. What it would cost for a typical, some of the typical SharePoint deployments that we've seen um, for the first year, okay? And then the blue is uh, cost for hosting SharePoint for the first year. Now, keep in mind that I'm talking about managed services and not just strictly hosting. When I say managed services, I'm not talking about sort of the the, the bulk commoditized hosting. I'm talking about um, our, managed, our managed services team, which is comprised of, uh, well, right now there are four ex-Microsoft SharePoint employees from the product team who helped design, build, and test SharePoint, managing that infrastructure and supporting it and maintaining it. So when we talk about cost, um, you can see one of the bigger pillars there is staffing. Staffing is very expensive. Finding a good SharePoint administrator is nearly impossible today. 
um, I see people hire the wrong person all the time. We will actually, in this case, help you interview and find the right person for you. So if you guys need help finding the right SharePoint guys, please let us know. Please don't make the mistake that other people do and, and, and try three or four people out before you find the right person. Um, so you can see that you could save over $100,000 just in the first year alone. On this next slide, um, you can see for the second year um, it, uh, around $90,000. Uh, savings with hosted SharePoint. So there's some, there's some pretty good opportunity to save some money there. Um, and I think staffing is, is ob an, obvious, an obvious win if you choose something like a, a managed services offering or cloud offering. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, oh, yeah, you bet. <laughs> um, I want to mention again that if you go to our website, you can view that whole benefit, that, that entire benefits of hosted SharePoint uh, webcast. Great, thank you. The other question that came through was, why would we want to look at hosted versus premise? SharePoint. Yeah, that's another good question. And um, typically, where we see people make that choice is typically with people who really want to be, who, who, who feel like they're distracted by the IT burden of their, their technology. And what I mean by that is that um, historically, the value of IT is, is really being those. Um, um, the, va the value of IT is really being a part, forming that partnership with the business, with the departments that are delivering a particular business outcome. Um, when they after, but over time, historically, we've seen IT get inundated with supporting uh, a lot of infrastructure and a lot of dynamically changing technologies. And so, to that end. Um, uh, one of the big reasons why people choose hosted is because it allows IT to really to, to, to move back towards that strategic partnership with the business or the departments uh, or agencies and provide the technical guidance, but not as much the technical implementation. And so um, there's a lot more effective partnership between the business and IT. So the, one thing I like to, I guess I've seen people really kind of uh, get excited about is when they see the technology starts to disappear, but the solution really get elevated. The conversations are less about how do we deploy a server, how do we integrate, and more about look at the benefit we're getting, how can we get more, right? So um, sort of relieving yourself of a host of, of, the, of managing the infrastructure. I mean, my least favorite thing to do is, uh, I guess my least favorite thing in technology is moving parts. I don't like fans. I don't like hard drives. And the more, I, the farther I can get away from them, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Simeon. That sounds very helpful. If anyone has any more questions, please feel free to type them at this time. In the meantime, I'm going to click through a few point questions, and we would greatly appreciate your feedback. The first question, was this content helpful for your business, yes or no? A few more seconds. Great, thank you. The second question, please rate the presentation content. Excellent, good, or poor? Great, thank you. The last question, would you like us to schedule a follow-up, yes or no? All right, thank you. If there are no further questions, we'd like to thank Simeon again for this wonderful presentation. Again, we will be forwarding out the recorded version of this presentation once it becomes available. If you have any further questions about this presentation, please feel free to email Simeon at the email address that he had on his slide. Again, thank you everyone for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on our next webcast. You are now free to disconnect. Thank you.